can go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another edition of GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. Today we're talking about Tekton and CI, and I'm going to hand it off to the GitOps extraordinaire, Christian Hernandez. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm um, doing well. Um, I'm now feeling the meeting fatigue that everyone's <laughs> feeling. <laughs> It took a while for me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a I'm a people person, so I I, I like talking to people, anyways. But right. it's it, so it took me a little bit a while longer to to hit that. But I'm I'm on now. I'm excited uh, to talk about Tekton because uh, CI is actually something we haven't really talked about. Um, no, and it's a critical on, component, on the, right? Yeah. It's it's actually a big piece of the component for your GitOps <laughs> workflows, right? Exactly. It's 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 kind of like without CI, really, you're just doing infrastructure as code. With, right. with GetOps, so um, so you're not even really doing GetOps if you're if you don't have your CI process. So I think um, uh, this this, this would be a good show to introduce uh, Tekton as as CI, right? Kind of explore it a little bit. I'm going to be doing a lot of hacking. I'm going to be I have a presentation. I'm gonna be doing a lot of hacking. So everyone, uh, um, sit tight. Uh, get your questions in. We have questions are always great. Yeah, but, yeah. This is an uh, office so, hour, y'all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, but sit tight. I might go a little long today. So for those who are um, you know, who have a, who have a hard stop, just rewatch, you know, you can rewatch the, the, uh, the recording after, but just fair warning, I might go long because I'm going to kind of go over Tekton a little bit, then I'm going to hack at it. So I'm going to go from zero to one and then I'm going to go from one to 10, right? So <laughs> this isn't going to be, um, not even a crash course. This is going to be kind of like, I'm going to throw you in the deep end a little bit, but, um, you know, we, we can always, uh, re, uh, revisit this topic. So without further ado, I think I'm going to share my screen here. Um, where is that share screen button? It's always, it's always Green in the same button place. in the middle. Green button in the yeah, middle, it's, man. <laughs> it's, it's always in the same place, yet I can never find it. Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm sharing my, uh, the, the right desktop right here. All right, cool. Um, let's go to... Um, let me present this here. Um, also, this will be this will be shared out, right? Um, uh, Chris, uh, we'll we'll share this out. I gave him a copy oh, yeah. of this. So, I just so. got to find that link. And yeah, so yeah, he'll, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he'll he'll put that in the chat somewhere. Um, and so it. I'll uh, I'm gonna go over like what Tekton is, right? So like CI, I I, I hope some most of you know, um, is uh you know it's it's something that everyone knows right already. So CI, I'm not gonna go too deep what CI is. I'm pretty sure someone experienced CI. Um, oh, also Hillary was supposed to be on chat. She said she's gonna a braided silver, by the way, and that that's like her, um, her background is CI. So she'll keep me honest. Oh, cool. If I okay. say anything dumb. So, um, so uh, so C uh, so Tekton is cloud native CI CD, right? And so um, what differentiates cloud native CI CD and traditional CI CD, right? Uh, there's this table here. I'm not gonna read. Um, I'm not gonna read off the ta uh, this table here. Uh, there's the links in the chat, so you guys can uh, take a look at that uh, presentation. But mainly is the traditional, uh, tr what we call traditional CI CD was built before cloud native architecture. So mm -hmm. it has um, it has a lot of tech debt behind it, right? And that's, you know, I'm not saying that as a, um, to be grudged or anything. It's just, no. that's just the state, the state, of, the state of the world mm -hmm. at that time. And, you know, <laughs> it just happens, right? And so, um, um, and, and the why behind the cloud native CI CD is essentially it's like we don't want to bring over all that debt, that tech debt onto a cloud native platform, right? So some things like the CI, traditional CI CD is really designed for virtual machines and cloud native CI CD is designed for containers. And really, I think really that's the core of it. And then everything else kind of um, kind of falls into place after that, if you keep that in mind, right? And so, um, you know, when you move to a cloud native, what's that? Peanut butter and jelly type stuff. Peanut yeah. butter, yeah, yeah, no, pe peanut butter, peanut jelly, butter peanut, butter yeah. peanut butter, chocolate, peanut butter, chocolate is gonna come. It's, it's peanut butter and chocolate for right? Argo. Peanut butter and jelly is for CICD. Yeah, that's, that's right, exactly. Yeah. This is the peanut butter and jelly aspect of it, right? right, right. The, <laughs> I love it. Is you know cloud native um, a CI process, right? And re and really, let's 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 not um, beat around the bushes. So I'm talking Jenkins versus Tankton, right? And so, um, and not not to say anything bad about Jenkins, but even Jenkins itself, they know. Um, this limitation because there's projects like Jenkins X, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if you can, so, which is cloud native Jenkins, right? So it's not like um, it's a big secret, right? Is you know they're even Jenkins themselves, and they have you know Jenkins X mm -hmm. as um, 
um, you know, came out of, of the, the need for cloud native CI CD. So, mm -hmm. um, and we have uh, OpenShift pipelines, which I think GA today. It may, oh, may or not today? GA today. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like, like literally a few <laughs> I, like I, literally a few hours I, ago, right? <laughs> I've been on air, so I haven't been checking my email. Yeah, and so well, I'm I'm on I'm on the chat with the the engineer, so it's either okay. they either just came out or they're getting ready to stage it to to stage out. But it's it's here, right? And um, um, OpenShift pipelines is based on Tekton, and so um, uh, the Tekton, which is kind of weird, Tekton is a CI tool, but it's part of the CD foundation. I don't make the rules, so I don't know that. Right, but. It is what it is, right? Um, it's a governing body, right? And um, people like like Cloudbees, Jenkins, uh, Tekton, they're, they're all Red part Hat, of the, this, yeah. this, yeah, Red Hat, we're all part of this foundation. So uh, Google's there, you know, it's it's a uh, uh, the governing mm -hmm. body uh, for a lot of these um, uh, projects. So um, OpenShift Pipeline's built on Tekton. And so what, um, I want to go over kind of the, the, the concepts for Tekton before right so um so one is uh tecton we're gonna hear me talk about steps right so steps is essentially like running commands in a container right like get clone maven build that sort of thing right mm -hmm. a docker push um and a task is essentially a list of steps so um so task is nothing but a collection of steps to take right so a task can be like uh like the previous example i said like um let's say build um, you know, build application, you know, um, cl you know, get clone, right? And then task will do a get clone and um, the step will do the get clone, but the task wraps that into a, uh, a workable unit here. And then a pipeline is nothing but a collection of tasks. So you have a pipeline, we'll run one task, task, uh, run on the other task, run the other task, and they could run, um, um, you know, those tasks in parallel or uh, serially, right? Mm -hmm. So... It, it, it kind of, it's kind of like it builds on each other, right? You can think of those little Russian dolls, right? A step is nothing but a collection yeah. of tasks. Task, oh, sorry. A task is nothing but a collection of steps. Pipeline is a collection of tasks. Pipeline resource, um, it's actually deprecated. We don't use that anymore. However, uh, the only reason I put it up here is because if you if you look up Tekton on Google, you're going to see a lot about pipeline resources, but okay. we don't use those anymore. Um, Fair enough. And so, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a task task run um, and this will make more sense once I, once I start drilling down, uh, but a task run is a invocation of a task, right? So a task is nothing but a definition and task run is instanti instantiation of that definition. So it's kind of like difference between an image and a container, right? A container is a running version of the image, right? So it's kind of that sort of paradigm. And the same thing with pipeline run, right? Pipeline run is an instantiation of a pipeline, right? So you define a pipeline, and when you run it, you have to, um, you know, that's a pipeline run, right? The, the, the whole um, instantiation of that. So, um, and there's things like uh, triggers, right? Tekton has the concept of triggers, uh, just like any pipeline. So um, I've talked cool. a lot today, so I'm going to drink a lot of water. No, I, um, I'm, on, I'm in the same boat, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking all day since so, like 6 a.m. Just for context, um, folks, we've been planning uh, Summit. Uh, yep. GitOpsCon, which is GitOps. uh, you know, a day zero event for KubeCon. Yeah, KubeCon itself, OpenShift Commons gathering, and yeah, so. all the office hours for <laughs> KubeCon. So yeah, we've been a little busy this week. Yeah, but busy. So, yeah. so forgive, uh, forgive me if I, I pause to drink water because it's yeah, it's been a, long it's, it's a lot of talking has happened, especially today. Yeah, especially today has been um so. Um, so steps, right? So here, when I talk about steps, like Maven build is a step, um, you know, uh, you know, parse the YAML is a step, get clone is a step, right? So, um, mm -hmm. they're container specific. So when you are providing environment variables, volumes, config map secrets, right? You are, you're providing that to the, the step, right? So that's what, what, what a step is. So a task is a collection of steps. Right, so it, it, it's essentially a unit of work, um, like um, you know, Maven install is a task, right? So that'll have one or many steps, right? Maybe it'll have a git clone. Maybe you do Maven install. Maybe you'll do something else. It'll just you know, a task is a unit of work that collects them logically. Um, 
so for example, here, um, you know, task Maven, right. MVM build, right. And you can parameter and like you, and then basically these are supposed to be, uh, um, uh, um, I guess agnostic, right? Like you, your, your steps are specific and then your tasks are agnostic because like here you can say here, here are my parameters. So when I do a Maven build, I do Maven build and then something, right? And that something is right. passed via task, via parameter. So like get clone is a task. I'm sorry, get clone is a step. Get clone a specific repo, that's a task because you're passing that repo as a parameter. So, um, and then a task run is basically, like I said before, an instantiation of that. Uh, you know, you have your task set up and a task run is when you, when you run the task, it'll ask you, okay, well, what, you know, like my previous example of git clone, right? Okay, well, what repo you want me to clone? And then once it clones it, that's a task run, right? At, at the very end, it's like the end result of, of all that, right? So when a task run runs in a, uh, in a pod, essentially. So each task runs in a pod. And so a pipeline um, is a collection of tasks, right? So you can kind of see how, how I'm building this already is I have their steps, a task is a collection of steps and a pipeline is a collection of tasks. Um, and then basically defines the task execution, right? In the order. So you can do things like ser uh, serially, right? Like one, two, three, four. Um, you can have things run in parallel, right? Things that are, that you want to run at the same time that don't really depend on each other and then you can put dependencies in right i want you to run task one after task sorry i don't want you to run task two after task one task four doesn't matter when you run it you can run it just as long as you run it after task two but in parallel to task three right you can get really really crazy with this as i as i've learned right and so just just kind of a, a heads up i I learned Tecton by just beating at it for a while yeah. because it just was it wasn't making sense to me. But then once it made sense, I go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I could I could see the power in mm -hmm. in, in Tecton, and I'll, and I'll 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 show you some good resources after this, right? So, kind of powering through this, right? So if every task runs in a pod, you know, how am I supposed to chain these tasks together in a pipeline, right? So if I do a get clone and my next task is a a Docker build, how does the Docker build see your get clone and just the answer to that is a pvc right per a persistent volume so um um your uh, your tasks are running you know pods and pods spread around you know all kinds of uh nodes in your cluster so you need to use a uh, persistent volume right so and if um kind of kind of a fun fun fact if you use a persistent volume that has block storage all your um all your tasks run on the same node just because that's just like you can't because it's um block storage you can't share it between nodes since so it's kind of fun secret that i found out that may or may not matter to you but just fun kind of secret in mind. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i was overloading like my node wasn't scheduling anything because it was like overloaded i was like oh i'm using block storage yeah that makes sense like all the pods want to jump on the on this one node um because so if you're um so just you know read wide read write once mm -hmm. versus read write many use read write many if you can um so that way your pods schedule in different nodes so uh pipeline run kind of like a task run is basically an instantiation of your pipeline right you define your pipeline and when you say pipeline run it'll uh it'll ask you the series of questions right the parameters whatever you put in and um you know, uh, when when I when I start hacking away, it'll make more sense. But um, that's what a pipeline running is, right? So, nice. uh, triggers are pretty cool. Uh, triggers is something I'm going to show as well. Um, it's basically um, something that well, the way the reason I'm the way I'm using it is that I'm using it uh, get webhooks, right? When I make a commit, it'll okay. trigger a pipeline essentially. Um, but it's just a, a webhook essentially. So um, you can curl it. You can um, you can chat ops it if you want, right? You yeah, no, I mean, webhooks are you, awesome for yeah. their versatility and ease of use. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, definitely, definitely. And so, um, so yeah, so you have a, um, the event listener has a trigger template, meaning that when you do a pipeline run, it'll ask you for the parameters, but you can pre predetermine that parameter, right? So when someone hits this webhook, pass these parameters to this pipeline, and you know you can you can already see how things are starting to chain together. So, um, so tasks 
you, as you'll see, you can pretty much write anything. It's like you can do environment bash, even write a whole shell script of what your task will do. You can do uh, ENV, write Python, write write a Python script. Um, but why? Uh, but uh, but why do that, right? So um, there's people like um, you know even Red Hatters, people in the community have a t um, uh, like a catalog, right, of reusable tasks. Um, so why write it when someone else uh, has already written it sort of thing. And uh, Tecton Hub is also in beta, right? So if you go to hub-preview.tecton.dev, um, can I put that in the chat? Someone will put it in the chat. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah so. Um, you said preview? Uh, actually, it's hub-preview.tecton.dev. That's right. I got it. I got it. Yeah. And, so, um, and so, yeah, and that's kind of like the Tecton Hub. That's kind of like the you know, uh, the, the, the known good um, tasks that you can use. So, um, so basically, if you want to write your own cool, if you don't, just, uh, um, you there know, you search the catalog. <laughs> Steal, hey, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of reusing someone else's work if it's good, right? If it's good. Yeah. Great artist no, steal. Yes, exactly. Right. right? Like, hey, like, seriously. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I don't have time to also, like, I don't want to write my own thing that I need to maintain, right? Like mm -hmm. why I can do that. So. Add on to what someone else maintains. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which 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 you'll see um uh some of the stuff that I've done here. So um this is actually pretty easy, right? With the pipeline architecture, you uh define a pipeline, you know, it'll run many tasks. And once you have those, then you can reuse it, right? And for many things, right? So um Technically speaking, you can define a one pipeline, but use it for many um, uh, pipeline runs. So this is kind of a paradigm that the Jenkins people, um, you know, those those who are really into Jenkins, um, this will mess you up because it's usually a one to one relationship, right? Like this is my project Fubar pipeline. This is my project Baz pipeline, and as they're two distinct pipelines, actually in, in Tecton it's just one pipeline. Right, like it's generic enough to where it's one pipeline. The pipeline run is what differentiates those pipeline runs. And so, ah, um, okay. So you could, you could essentially pipeline is the template, and then you can use that over and over and over and over and over, and over again. So um, this will this mess me up a little bit, um, and I still haven't quite figured out how to uh, make a pipeline template. But that's the idea. So I'm just kind of just giving you the uh, mm. um, uh, the the Nirvana concept. So um, there you go. So uh, so cool. Real quick, I didn't take too much time because no. um, I wanted to. How do I get exit out of this? There we go. I wanted to kind of go over um, Tecton in general. Uh, so here, if you go to the pipelines here, I already have a pipeline, but um, we'll talk about this pipeline specifically. If I want to create a pipeline, I can come here. And this has like a like a GUI um, saying like, hey, I want to do a like a Git clone. Yeah. And when when I do a Git clone, you know, I enter this URL, uh, you know, this um, you know branch mm -hmm. or whatever, right? You can put main um, sub modules, blah blah blah, right? So and then you can start chaining them together. So I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to go drop down to the command line and go over a very simple hello world to begin with. So okay, I'm going to put cool. this in chat. And so this is one of, if not the best tech getting on, getting started tech on um, articles I've ever read. Oh, so, Cedric um, wrote it. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying, he was so, like brand new. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this is actually, so for those of you who don't know, Cedric was actually one of the, uh, one of our interns. He's well, coming he back this in summer, by the way. Yeah. 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 So he, <laughs> by the way, everyone absolutely loved him. He yeah. was he wasn't even an intern on our team. He was the intern on our dev advocacy team. Right. But like and he but he was he did a show on OpenShift TV and everything. And he yeah. did it phenomenally. So he was, yeah. He actually Got taught it. me some something. So it's yeah. always great when an when an intern can teach you something. Right. Absolutely love him. Yeah. Um so uh, he wrote this. Um so if I'm kind of gonna be loosely following this blog. So if, if you want to Fair enough. Um, take a look, you got there, right? So I got um so uh, let's take a look at a simple task, right? What did I call this? Uh, zero. There you go. Um, right. 
so this is a task, right? So what I'm okay. going to say, I'm going to have, I'm going to have one step. The name of it is say hello. Right. And then um, I'm going to deploy like a specify UBI an image container. I don't know if you got yeah, UBI container. And which is, this was really pretty cool is I could just do a bash dash C and just start scripting away. Right. And it nice. just does echo hello world. Right. So let's, um, let's, uh, we'll see, apply this. Come on. Come on, cluster. There we go. You can do it. Um, you can do it. <laughs> and so I, I'm actually like, hopefully they don't delete this cluster as I'm using it. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> it, it should. It's less than 24 hours, so I guess it's good. Um, so now if I do um, OC get uh, tasks, oops, tasks. It says there, but actually you, there's a Tecton CLI. I can do. Uh, I think it's task list. Right, it it essentially uses the same thing. So, nice. um, so now I have the task loaded up. Let's let's run it. Right. So if I do a Tecton uh, task start, uh, show log, and I want to do hello. Can you extend the lifetime? I have a command for that. If you have the permission. Oh no, yeah, no. Yeah. She's uh, um she's mm. talking about uh something. No, I'm I'm not I'm not using that that um that cluster. Feature. I'm using something else. Yeah, yeah I'm using okay. something else. Yeah. Um. So here, uh, Tecton tasks start, right? You see, it says, hello world. Pretty simple, essentially, right? If you say, hey, run this task. Uh, if I do OC get pods, I think, yeah, it's completed, right? It, it ran, actually ran a pod mm -hmm. there and that just ran that and it exited. Um, so if I do OC get um, task run, right? It's essentially there. So if I, if I wanted to run it again, right? Run it again. It'll right. Hello world. Beautiful. If I do OT get a uh, task list, right. It'll have one task. If I do get, uh, get tasks, right. One task. But if I do task run, right. There's multiple tasks. So this is kind of like, this will show you. It'll say every time it runs, it essentially creates a new pod, um, and runs. That's a new instantiation of that. So, um, cool. So that's like the simple hello world. Uh, let's add some parameters, right? So let's do parameters. So this file here. So it says, so I want to be able to reuse this, right? I don't want to just say hello world. I want to say right. hello and then someone's name. Mm -hmm. um, so here I'm going to parameterize it, right? I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to create a parameter called person. And this is kind of description, name a person to greet. Um, and this is, it's a type of string, right? So you can actually have types. You have string. You have booleans, you know, you have uh, int, um, whatever, right? And then the default is world. So if no one specifies anything, I'm just going to say hello world. And essentially here, this is how you specify the parameters. You can say param.person. It's essentially a uh, follow the JSON path, right? It's like params person, right? So hello that. Straightforward. So if I do, uh, also, well, see, play. well, we'll see, right? Famous last yeah. words. Okay. So I got that. Uh, Tecton, let's do a task run. Where am I? Let's clear this screen here. Um, Thank you. It's getting well, yeah, pretty far like, down it, there. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pretty, pretty far down. So now, now when I start the task, it'll ask me, um, hey, you need a parameter. You didn't specify one, the default world, right? And so right. if I press enter, it'll just say hello world. Um, and... There, there you go. go, right? If I run it again, I can say, uh, hello, Christian, right? And Did you provide the parameter on the command line? Great question. I love, I love it when people ask questions that of the next thing I'm about to show, right? I, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can say uh, dash P for parameter, nice. right? Per uh, person equals, uh, let me go. Um, Bob, it doesn't matter. Bob, there we go. Uh, oh, file. Uh, oh, there you go. Task. Oh. argument. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I forgot to put hello, the name of the task. <laughs> oh, duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I deleted the task name for whatever reason, right? And so here <laughs> it'll, um, um, you know, then you can provide that in the command line. Hello, Bob. Ta -da. Another cool thing. Another cool thing is I think it's dash dash use, uh, use oh, params defaults, right? Um, again, I forgot the name of the. Oh yeah, that. Mm. 
So then you can do um, param defaults, right? So since I set up a, um, a default of world. I have a default. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that way it doesn't ask you interactively. You can just pass it along. So Very nice. Um, so those are parameters, right? You can pass that to a task. So now, um, now let's uh, create a pipeline, right? I have, yep, pipeline, right? You see here. So, um, so one, um, this file, I'm going to create a task. This task says, um, you know, what, you know, say what, right? I like, I like Cedric's um, names, right? It's, it's, yeah. He, 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 always, he, he always keeps you engaged, even in writing. So it's, it's always fun. Um, right. So it's, it's something to say, right? Uh, so what should I say? The default hello. Um, how long I should wait, right? So it's kind of giving me um, a, uh, a, something Maybe. to sleep on, right? Because right. the step here, mm -hmm. it says uh, sleep, param, pause duration, and then say whatever you're going to say, right? So I, I kind of chain those together. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, yeah, so you can kind of just see, you know, a sleep however long, then echo whatever you're going to say. So in the pipeline, let's come down here. Mm -hmm. Now I have two tasks. So task one, this is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to highlight it a little bit. So this is task one um, from uh, 29 to 36. So task one, I'm going to pass. I want you to sleep for two seconds and then say, hello, this is the first task. Um, and the task ref, meaning like, I, I want you to apply this parameter to this task. So the task we just defined above, say something. Second task. Second task, I'm not sleeping anything, right? So it's going to take the default, which is zero. No sleep. No sleep. No sleep. no sleep. no sleep for you. It's kind of like us. No sleep. We're busy. Right. Um, <laughs> no, I sleep. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Maybe you don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I dedicate I take time to sleeping. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I provided eight hours um, right. to my to my task. So, um, and say this is... I have to I say, check this, this box. It's on my list. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> and then, um, and then I'm, I'm referencing the same task. So here you can see that you can have a, a, a generic task, but you can use it multiple times in your pipeline. So nice. um, cool. So let's uh, first let's do OC get pipeline. All right, there's no pipelines. If I do OC apply, and then uh, get pipeline, my pipeline's there. And so uh, let's run this pipeline. Uh, so that's Tecton uh, pipeline start. And then, oh, what was the name? Say things. There we go. So say things and then uh, show log. So this is going to fire up. This will actually fire up two pods. It'll fire up the first pod for the first task and second pod for the second task, right? And so this says, um, hi, this is the first task. Right, runs the first task, mm -hmm. and then once that's done, it'll uh, fire up the next pod, right, and then run the second task. So, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and then what's really cool is, oops, when you start chaining these uh, together together here, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say things in order. Right, and so um, I don't I don't have the task defined here because it's already I've already defined it right I already added that in. Um, so first task, I'm gonna pause for two seconds, say hello, right? Same as uh, the other pipeline. This pipe, this next pipeline is also I'm gonna pause for two seconds, and then but if you notice here, lines 23 and 24, I'm creating a, um, a dependency here. I want to say. Uh, run this second task right after the first one. Um, so in, in the previous example, and we, we you couldn't see it because just because of the, the nature of the thing, but both of those pods fired off at the same time um, because we didn't build a dependency. So the fact that the first one came in first and the second one came, say came in second was just a coincidence. Um, this here, I'm creating a hard dependency. I'm going to say, don't start this task unless the first one finishes. Third task, I have um, also a dependency here on the third third task. Run after the first task, but I'm not putting a dependency on the second task, right? Um, it I, it, I have no dependency on the second task, only the first task. So this so this kind of says the second task and the third task will run at the same time. However, I want you to note the value. 
the third task for to sleep is one, and the second one is two. So this is, this will produce an interesting result. And then um, the fourth task, I have a hard dependency on the second and third task. So um, a little bit confusing, especially when you get when you get down to this level. Um, yeah, like. And so. You know, when I think of sequencing uh, tasks together, you, uh, Ansible immediately comes to mind, and there is some, mm -hmm. you know, syntax similarities here, but the yeah, execution yeah. is a little different, right? Like, kind yeah, of the exactly, way yeah. you make it happen. Yeah, exactly. There's run afters, and you know, making sure the order yeah. of operation stays the way it is is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and and order and order of operation is important, and I'll I'll show yeah. you why in a little bit. Um, well, it's CI, so, so that's yeah, yeah. It's always, yeah. It's <laughs> always going to be somewhat important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here, let's go OC apply uh, pipeline order. All right, so let's hey, do uh, tecton pipeline list. All right, so now I have say things in order. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me clear this here. So Tecton pipeline uh, start, and then uh, what is it? Uh, oops, things in order. In order. There you go. Show log right. So this is always the fun part, right? And so mm -hmm. um, waiting for things to blow up. Waiting for things to blow up, and this will. So I have the first task. Right, it's coming up. Nice. Beautiful first task. Mm -hmm. So uh, both of these happen. Third task. Second okay. task, third task, right? And then um, so these two run in parallel. And then this That's happened cool. after the second one. Yeah. And so um, you can put dependencies on that. Um, I feel know, like that's uh, like that's well. a little bit cleaner than you know, like what I was thinking yeah. originally, right? Like the yeah, fact no, you it's, can it's, do it's, tasks it's, in parallel so easily, right? Like that's kind of an advanced feature for some tooling. Like this is just right out of the box. Like yeah, we're gonna embrace this concept. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, so yeah, this is kind of like the the crash course in Tecton. Mm -hmm. um, so I put that in the chat. It's it's actually I I was struggling with Tecton and in in. And I, I found that from Cedric and I was like, okay, this is like, this was the Nirvana, nice. at least for, for me to, for me to get it. Right. Um, that's uh, doing complex things is funnily enough complex. Right. And so, um, and so how does this, how does this fit Tekton fit with Argo CD? Right. And so, right. Um, you know, this, that's the big reveal. And so, um, so I have a pipeline here. And it's doing a bunch of things, right? And so um, first thing I'm doing is I'm cloning the repo. Um, and that's like one task, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I clone the repo. Um, and then I set an image tag, right? So I define, so um, I'm not a big fan of floating tags, right? So floating tags, for those of you who don't know, is like dev, prod stage right yeah so like long live not, tags right like yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not a, i'm not a big fan of those tags i'm actually more of a fan of like a version like v 2.1.3 or mm. um what i'm doing here is i'm just taking the the i'm chopping off the last part of the hash in my um repository my, my code repository mm. that specific git commit I'm taking that tag, I'm taking that hash and I'm just using it as an image tag. So I know what version is what. Um, and so that's task two. Task three is, um, has many steps, right? So here, the, these, um, yeah, you know, Git clone has task. one step, yeah. single step. This one has three, right? I have a, um, a build command, right? I'm using builder. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, um, I used to use source to image, but now I'm just using builder. And uh, it does the build. So once it does that, it takes that, the end results, and then pushes it to Quay. So I have, uh, or cool. for those of you in English, key, right? Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, what I do is I take those end results and I load it up in a variable, right? Because I use it, every step, I, I load what I'm doing into variables so I can use it in downstream steps. Um, I, so here I have a parallel task, right? I have two tasks that are independent of each other. So I run them in parallel. Um, hmm. 
so I do a Scopio copy of the of the task the, of the of the of the tag that I'm using to latest, mm-hmm. right? So my my dev version is always latest. So I just do a Scopio copy, making sure uh, the image is updated, nice. and then I'm cloning my deploy repo. So once I finish, you know, once I'm finished doing um, my application, right? So if I come here and I oh, show okay. you, yeah, this this is my code repo. This is nothing but my source code. Right. right. And this is what this is what I'm building here. I actually have a deployment repo. So I have two repos for my application. I have one mm-hmm. for the actual source code and one for the actual GetOpsy stuff. Right. Which makes um, perfect sense. Yeah, you want to keep those separate. I, right. I'm, I'm a big proponent. It trying to do it all in one repo is headache. Messy so, at um, best. Yeah. Really <laughs> messy. Well, and also they have different life cycles, right? My application is going to be changing a lot versus my infrastructure, not as often. Um, not as often as you think. And so, um, so I'm cloning that deployment repo, right? The deployment uh, repo where I defined um, a lot of these, like, right, I'm gonna, I deploy this. I have an overlay for a dev, overlay for production, right? Um, and I'll, I'll show you how that works in a little bit. So, um, oh, can't wait to that again. Well, watch it. <laughs> Watch it be no okay good. I like watch it be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have, um, you know, I clone the uh, um, the deployment repo, and I do that in parallel with Scopio copy because they're they're not related. So now I'm using customize to patch um, the image um, inside my deployment repo. So I use customize set image, and that'll update my customized file in the Git repo. And then I actually commit to dev. So since it's my dev environment, I just screw it, right? Just push it right. straight to dev. I want to see. Uh, this could be sandbox. It could be whatever environment you want. But in my case, it's dev. So I just want to do a git push of that update that I made. Next step oh. is I'm going to patch prod. Um, so I want to say, hey, um, production, I want, to, um, I want to also update the image for production. But instead of committing, I want to create a branch. <laughs> And then the last step is create a PR, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so notice all of the steps here in Tecton, there's absolutely nothing to do with Argo. Right. No, nothing to do with Argo. Like at all. Um, <laughs> like at all, right? All Argo's doing, and here, uh, here's my dev environment. All Argo's doing is looking at my Git repo. So um, Tecton, right, does the CI. Uh, Argo does the CD part and mm-hmm. Git is the center of everything, right? And so, um, you know, Chris, we always say that GitOps uh, isn't a tool, it's a practice. Right. Um, but if GitOps was to- is, is a tool, it's not Argo, it's not Flux, it's not ACM, it's actually Git, right? That's right. like your GitOps tool is Git because right. the workflows all happen in Git. And so, um, and that's why they're kind of not, they're not interacting directly with each other, Argo CD or CI. Um, you know, they're, they, they don't really necessarily know about each other, um, but they are working together through your Git workflows. And so let's, um, so I have this, my source code repository. This is my um, uh, deployment, right? So I have welcome app and welcome deploy. Um, I use overlays for my environments. Um, this can spark a very deep discussion and, and this uh, will be yeah. another show. Yeah. This will be another show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I'm a big fan. You know, the difference between production and development or like a dev and sandbox is actually not a lot, right? What's, what's really different is right. maybe the, the image you're using and the secrets uh, environment variables, but the, the base is and now I'm kind of talking about customized. The base is usually the same deployment mm-hmm. custom, like all deployment service route. It's the same. You're just kind of patching it. So that's why I do that. Um, but we'll talk about directory structure. That that's a whole nother show by itself. Um, so I have. Actually, we do need develop- to do that because that's usually like one of the first questions that people start asking me. So you know mm-hmm. stuff about Argo, right? Yeah, I know a little. 
How do you yeah, handle the like, directories? Directories. And it's like, oh, well. Well. <laughs> you, know, um, you, want, you, want, you, know, you want to sit down and grab some coffee? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get something to yeah, eat how, real how, quick and we'll yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk here. Um, and so, yeah, so my deployment here um, is uh, this is kind of where, where um, the magic, this is the workflow here is kind of what glues it together. So right. uh, let's make a change, right? So I have... My development here, it says blue in my, oh, let me move this thing, this stupid, there we go. Um, my production says blue as well. So um, they're the same currently. So let's make a change. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. Um, where is blue? Let me just do a search of that. And we'll call this green, right? There you go. Stand, standard blue green deployment, right? Why make um, make changes here? Why well, did something yellow? Cool. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, uh, blue green see, is a uh, known term, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so get add that guy, get uh, commit, and we'll do um, updating to green. And then I have um, sign commits now. So I'm, I'm, I'm joining you. the cool crowd. Yeah, join the GPG sign commits. I've kind of given up on yeah. gpg to be honest with you oh exactly. <laughs> actually i did it with keybase and it was just like it was like a breeze so well if, yeah um, if you do it with keybase but then it's like it's like proprietary pgp <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's yeah it's kind of weird yeah mm -hmm. so um i actually got this from uh from scott our, our friends over at weave works he yeah. kind of um i was like oh i think i'm gonna do that so anyway um uh, so i pushed that up uh, oh actually i didn't push it up so i do a git push of my code Right, and so this uh, should trigger. I was about to say, yeah. What are we triggering here? Uh, let's go to pipelines. Uh, so you see, hey, pipeline run. That. It triggered that, right? And so, um, so as that's running, I'll show you where that's set up. Um, so here, uh, let me go back real quick. It's going to go through all those steps, right? Mm -hmm. And then my pipeline runs. You can see the history, and you can see the tasks are starting to come up. Um, and so I'll keep this up here, but I set up a, uh, my settings. So since this is a cooking show, I did this beforehand. Um, web hooks, right? I set up a web hook here. Uh, this is what it's called an event listener, right? And it's just a standard um, web yeah. hook here. Uh, if, so if something, something happens. Here, yeah, if something happens. So here are triggers. I set up the, the event listener trigger that's, um, you know, one of the things there. So nice. uh, where is my pipeline? And so, um, yeah, here. So here I, cl I clone the repo, right? Does it get clone? Kind of straightforward. Uh, set image tag. Essentially, um, I take the hash of the commit and then I am providing it as the tag for Quay. So Quay.io, welcome app, and then just the hash, right? So. I can identify a specific commit to a specific image. Um, this part takes a while, right? Is build a essentially on me. I'm just yeah, build has got to pull down all the layers and everything and all that fun stuff. But this is how you can use your cluster to build your images, right? Like yeah, yeah. And so, and this is kind of the the um, the idea about cloud native CI is mm -hmm. that you know it's kind of like a serverless type of thing. Is like you don't have a monolithic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have like a platform. I mean, nothing, there's anything wrong with that. It's just a different way of doing it, but you don't have a platform like Jenkins or like CloudBees. You uh, doing everything in cluster, you're leveraging your own cluster to do the build um, because everything's containers, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't have to have things running all the time. You just kind of serverless type of thing where it spins up when you need it. And then, you know, once this clone repo task is done, that pod leaves and those resources free up for other oh. things, so. Can you set up any caching along the way, just out of curiosity? Yeah, so um, that's, that's, that's a good question. So um, I'm doing a clone repo mm -hmm. and doing set image tag. And you're like, how, 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 how are you doing all that? Um, <laughs> if you go to storage and persistent volume claims, right? I have a volume. Okay. Right? And you can set up your pipeline to use the same volume. So right now, the way I, I have it okay. set up, I, it just creates a new volume each time. Okay. However, you can just tell it to you use could, the same volume. Yeah, you could totally be like, hey, just continue to use this volume. Yeah. You don't have to check this that is, every time. You just do an update, yeah. whatever, yeah. 
this is especially useful for people who are doing like Java, right? Like oh, if you yeah. want to cache, if yeah. you want to cache your Maven, right? Because you don't want to download Maven build, download the internet, right? You don't want to do right. that all the like, time. Yeah, you need to cache that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you want to you want to be able to cache uh, some of the things, and you just reuse the same storage in um. And uh, what about external? So here, here's a question. What about external artifact repositories like JFrog? Like JFrog. That makes sense. Yeah. Could you pull from that? Yeah. You can pull from that as well. So you can have not only caching locally, right? By yeah. doing, or artifactory or whatever. You can cache mm -hmm. it, you know, on, on the storage. And um, how do you clone and, a oh, private repository? That's a good question. Yeah. So, so if you go here, if you go to uh, tasks, and click on cluster tasks, you can actually look. There's some cluster tasks are pre-built tasks, right? So okay. you know, so there's a there's a git clone task here. Yeah. And if you look at the YAML, um, let me scroll Whoa, down because comments. this is a big YAML. Yeah. Annotations, <laughs> we don't care about annotations. So you can provide um, a, what am I doing here? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, you don't provide it in the task. I'm sorry. You provide it in a secret. I was about so to say, you, is this a config map or secret thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, um where's uh I forget under where secrets compute, are stored. I think is it is it under compute? No, no. Uh, it it goes to show you how how often I use the how UI. How often we um, go into the UI? Yeah. You see here, uh, networking work workloads maybe. It's gotta be secrets. There somewhere. it is. Yeah, it's gotta be someplace up top. <laughs> and then and I do get so I have a I have a token and an SSH key and you just load it up, um, in. Uh, so this is kind of like the black magic. I kind of wish we did this with Jafar, but this is like middle of the night with Jafar. Mm -hmm. um, when you add a Git secret, oh, that's right. So you add a, um, now I remember. So you add a, the, the, your secrets and when you are- Calling them in the task. No, in the, the, the task runs as a specific um, service account. Oh. Called, called pipeline. Nice. The, the service account pipeline, you just- Has um, those- yeah, so I, I, I said, secrets. yeah, nice. Yeah, so the service account pipeline. So first I create the secret, mm -hmm. and then I say the service account has access to this secret and this secret, and Tekton just knows to use it. It's mad. It's actually just magic at that point, right? So you say. Um, it's just magic, FM as in code. lines of Go code. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it looks like uh, my pipeline finished. Let's look at the pipeline run. Um, so my pipeline run, all green, beautiful. Nice. Um, task runs, right? You can see the, uh, where the logs go. So you can say, so you can see. Oh, you can see. Have, the, oh, wow. Mm, fancy. Yeah. So I have, you know, uh, we left off here, build and push, right? Mm -hmm. So step one, build it. Step two, push it. Step three, um, you know, cat the information I need and sort it into a variable because I'm using mm -hmm. it later. Um, so I clone. So these two ran at the same time. Clone deployment repo. Tag to latest. Right, so I'm doing a Scopio copy. Um, right, I'm gonna say Quay. This hash is up to latest. Patching dev. I'm running this customize command. So customize. Um, for, I was doing this weird YQ um, thing in order to patch it, and then someone said, "Hey, you know you can do that with customize." And I was like, "Thank God." <laughs> 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 I'm like I, I was like uh, that's actually um, Andrew Pitt, one of the one of the Canadians that I ah got it. Um, okay. They're like, hey, you can do a customized edit. I'm like, this is really cool. Uh, so basically, <laughs> what that does is it it updates your customize uh, .yaml file to say um, update the image for this deployment um, when you read it in. So uh, I commit to dev because I like to live dangerously, but um, I using uh, the git commit right command to just push to dev. Mm -hmm. I patch prod right same same. It's actually patch prod and patch dev are the same task, except um, what repo I I target, uh, what directory I target. I'm sorry. Uh, branch the prod right. I'm creating a branch, and then I do a pr right. So how does this look like? Uh, Argo should have already yeah. So Argo, if I refresh dev, it says green. But prod does not say green. I have a process. Prod. I have a process, right? I go to my PR and look to see here magic FM, right? Yep. Magic here is the P is my CI process created this pull request. And this pull request is basically I go to files change, right? And 
Um, if you noticed here, it says overlays prod customization. Let's look at the full file. Mm -hmm. Right in this, basically the section in the customized edit that you saw on there, mm -hmm. um, essentially updates this this field here. If I go back, so you can see here. So here, you know, you can you can uh, I can say uh, this is dumb, right? Like you can go through your, you know, start the review, start the process, um, that sort of thing, right? So, um, kind of just to go back here. So what, what I'm doing is I'm, I, I I commit to Dev directly. But the way I'm doing the like, gating is essentially I'm doing it through a PR and using get using your workflows, right? My workflow is pretty simple, but your workflows will be a little more complex, right? There's going to be code review. Um, you know, you have protected branches. You're going to, you know, do yada, yada, yada. So, um, and so um, if I want this to go to production, right? All I have to do is I go, okay, cool. Merge pro request. You know, merging my own pull request. Um, I don't need Whatever. this. I don't need this. I don't need this branch anymore. So I'll just delete it. Um, and then the code is updated. And so if I go to um, do a hard refresh on, you see that Argo says, "Oh, hey, there's a new image updated," and Argo automatically creates a new pod. And so if I go to my application, it should say green now. Uh, the route stale route come on there we go green um so now my dev matches production because i just approved that pr so um there is a question here let me see here uh one second i'm gonna need like hot tea after this um right. <laughs> so do people usually create separate cluster for this you'll probably not want this in your regular application cl clusters right so um so argo so it depends wh what you um um yeah so it depends what, what you're yeah. doing. Right? So it, it looks like braided silver also says it depends as well. But mm -hmm. um, you, your, your pipeline, it just depends where, where you'd be running it, right? So in my pipeline, um, um, I would do it all in that same cluster. The deployment of that pipeline, though, is different, right? The deployment, Argo CD can deploy to many clusters, right? Uh, Argo CD can deploy to one cluster. Right, this this is dev and prod in different namespaces, but it can be different clusters as well. Um, um, but the actual pipeline is is running um, on the cluster. So there's not like a clustered pipeline, right? Like that's not the idea of, of, of Tecton is you won't have um, like a fleet of Tectons running. You would have one instance of Tecton. But I can see why you would want that because you're, you're coming from the, um, the Jenkins world, right? Where it's like you'll have... Because Jenkins has like what what are those Jenkins um, agents or whatever that they deploy and do their own work. Mm -hmm. um, this is like another way of thinking of, of doing that. Um, yeah, pipelines could spin up a test cluster as well. Uh, right. Hillary, Hillary is saying validate and then promote to production. That's another uh, another way of doing it. Um, is uh, that's what kind comes into place, right? Right. Like so, that's where. Is dev test separate from prod cluster a common pattern? That's a good question. Dev test cluster, yes. That, um, yeah, it is pretty common actually. It's, it's usually pretty common. Yeah. Um, it's actually, I would say, like, it, at the minimum, I see customers have three. Yeah. Right? They have like, like their 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 dev cluster, like their staging, and then production minimum. Um, right, and then and, sometimes they even have a. Well, there's like sandbox, right? right. Or like yeah, or you know, or like a production mimicked instance that they could the load balance over to or whatever for any upgrades or whatever. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a fan, and I, I've I've said this to a lot of people. And they know I'm a fan of clusters as cattle, right? Like if you're gonna deploy, um, you know, a new application, you're deploying a new version of OpenShift. But that's just me. I, I know I'm talking crazy. There's gonna be a lot a lot of people that says I'm talking crazy. Andrew says. I'm talking crazy. I, I understand that. Mm. Um, I understand customers aren't there yet. Let's just say that. Right. But I am a fan of clusters as cattle because, you know, GitOps fan over here. Um, so Sully's asking, can GitOps slash Argo CD be used to coordinate build on one cluster and deploy to another? Yeah. So yeah, um, no. so I, th I think 
this is also the the idea of divorcing the idea between CI and CD, right? Yeah. So um, I am in the opinion that's not Argo's job to right. coordinate the build on one cluster and build on the other. That's actually te- that's actually uh, Tecton's job. That's that that li- that relies on the lap of of Tecton. Tecton will coordinate that for you. So um, Argo CD in this scenario in CI CD is actually has a very small role to play, mm-hmm. I would say. It's actually a, a, a simple, but a simple slash powerful design of Argo is like, hey, I'm just a reflection of what you want to get. Um, right. It has other tool sets that make it actually uh, uh, pretty neat. You can do things like pre-sync hooks, post-sync hooks, sync waves. And that's actually a, a nice segue to, um, uh, I've talked about those before. So if you go to red, uh, red.ht slash GitOps, um, that I, I've talked about sync waves and things like that before. So Argo does have cer- certain tool sets that can orchestrate a little bit of this, but the real brains is in your Tecton. It's in your CI process. Right. Um, and so, you know, the way I would set it up to coordinate build on one cluster versus another is via C- um, Tecton. I would have Tecton... Um, Push the build thing. that somewhere else. Yeah, yeah push things in, in uh, other. So, so, uh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so Hillary says, uh, yeah, CI merge oh, your code yeah. in an integration environment for testing validation. CD deploy validated code to production. So, not um, everyone uses CI CD with those definitions. Yeah, those definitions. Which that's is, very true. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, sad and that. true. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, and also I think this is um, um. This is kind of just more of the tech debt we got from Jenkins because uh, Jenkins had a, such a large footprint and people were just using Jenkins as a one mo- big monolith that does everything, um, which at the time probably made sense. Um, but they are distinct things, CI, right? Continuous integration is more to do with code mm-hmm. than anything else. CD is really, you've done all your testing, you've done everything in um in your ci process when you're finally doing cd like it it should be like it should be like the safe thing to do i know we're on where i know a lot of people aren't there right we're not all there as an industry but the idea is cd shouldn't be scary because the scary stuff happened in ci right it failed in ci that's that's why you wanted to have failed in ci so I'm not going to say the name, but it starts with a T. Uh, I am using an approach very similar to yours, and I'm getting some pushback from devs that their CI does not let them know whether or not the deployment has worked or finished. Ooh. Yeah. Um, mm. You can have um, you can have hooks built into place. Yeah, right? you should be able to like hook off to yeah. Slack or you know whatever yeah, kind of thing to be like. Or like notification, email, whatever, yeah, whatever kind of notification thing you need, uh, yeah. system of record, um, whatever your thing you want, just have yeah. it. Yeah. So off to that. Yeah. So this is also the um, uh, a paradigm shift as well is that um, if you want notifications, you have to built in the notification. Right. And it's not um, it's not like out of the box, right? Like like hey, after if step one and step two finished. I'm going to curl this, you know, you can be as, 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 as coarse as that. Um, there might be something on the um, uh, Tecton hub. Let's just look, look real quick. Uh, there might be a notification task. Let's look for, uh, let's look Slack. Send to Slack channel. Look, I just solved all your problems in one. There you go. Look at you. <laughs> Solving all my problems. And so um, there, there's, there's definitely notifications you can set up. Um, Oh, they even have an Ansible runner. They have all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, or that, or uh, email, uh, send mail, mm-hmm. simple SMTP, email relay. I'm pretty yeah. sure there's Is something there, for SendGrid. Uh... I like using SendGrid. Oh, no. But anyway, send SendGrid. Telegram. Is That's awesome. Because <laughs> I could just have a Telegram group of my devs and boom, off they go. Yeah. Telegram. Send to Telegram. There you go. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so they're, um, so they're yeah, so Hillary, the messaging tag, it looks like click, check the box for messaging, clear your little search field, check the box for messaging. Oh, messaging. There we go. Uh, it's cool. Cause I don't have to, uh, I don't have to write any of these. 
right? Telegram, send, send web, the web to Slack. Slack, send a WebEx room, send a Telegram. Send a WebEx room. Wow. That's, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Needs carrier pigeon. Someone says uh, carrier pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Have that. Needs carrier pigeon. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's a carrier pigeon. So, like, you now when I'm, you know, so yeah, away, you just put oh, this task in at the end with, you know, echo all the results out and off you go. Yeah. Yeah, so um, some hooks hook to Argo, tell the devs to go to Argo and shut up. <laughs> so <laughs> so there's, um, uh, you can set up hooks to Argo as well. So post, post yeah. sync hooks, right? So there is uh, multiple notifications you can set. So the, the Argo, sorry, the, um, the Tekton, right? The, in your CI, you can mm-hmm. have hooks going in to send notifications. On Argo actually has a um, post sync hook Right. So like once everything is finished, you can say, Hey, the sync was successful. Here's, here's a hook. Yep. Um, there's also Argo CD hooks or, um, notifications. Um, I'm not a big fan of notifications in this aspect, but, um, one, because it's like alpha, but you can have, um, uh, notific- Argo CD notifications come in Ooh. Uh, via. You can commit the results of the CI testing back to get. Says Britain, you so can do cool. that as well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Commit the results of the CI testing back to Kit. That's actually pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. You can do that as well. I haven't thought about that. So pretty neat. So. I'm just going to call it now. T's question uh, was more <laughs> due to the fact that the deployment is sort of asynchronous. You just change the manifest and wait for Argo to do its thing. So the pipeline itself does not necessarily wait. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You could, um, and this is because I'm using a GitOps workflow. Right. You can use um, event driven, right? So what's really cool about um, Argo CD is that you can you can turn off the automatic sync and just mm-hmm. use hooks, and yep. then it turns into like an event driven. So you can actually still do event driven architecture um, with uh, cloud native tools, right? So um, and so. Yeah. Also, pipelines aren't linear as well, right? So it doesn't have to pause and wait for things. You can mm-hmm. do things in parallel. So um, as we saw in my pipeline, right, I have, I have one task that two things happen at the same time. Um, and so, yeah. So you can actually definitely use, um, you know, pipeline, trigger something in Argo, and your next task may be to wait for something to happen in Argo, get some, right. you know, I, you can even do something as dumb as uh, until curl equals 200. Right. You know, s- sleep 10, right? Like whatever. Yeah. You could be really coarse with it, but you know, something analogous to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can, you can definitely do event driven things as well. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, All right. So is there any, any other, uh, pause maybe for a little bit, uh, any other questions? Yeah, just pause for a second. Let's see. Um, now, now that I'm thinking, we should have just had Hillary on. But right. Like whatever. maybe. Yeah. Hi, hi, hindsight, hindsight 2020, she, sh- she should have came on to the, the stream. But right. Whatever. You know, maybe um, next time we're touching yeah. all of this, maybe Hillary should come on. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Especially get an SRE's uh, perspective on it. So, right. Um, exactly. That'd be, that'd be... So, yeah. 10 years, of, 10 years of CICD and being an SRE. Wow. She'll have a thing or two to say about it. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Next time we talk about CI. Uh, maybe we'll invite Hillary on. That'll be so, that'll be fun conversation. Where is Hillary SRE? SRE dedicated uh, org or dedicated? Yeah. Okay. Doing so good. she probably knows dedicated. Chris Collins. She knows all kinds of people. I Hillary, if you know Chris so. Collins, reach out to him about what he's working on with me. Mm. Oh, he's doing. So- oh, that's right. You guys have a uh, Ask mm. SRE channel. Thing We're working soon. on it. Yeah. I mean, Chris Collins and I go way back. Um, so he reached out Chris, to me. Chris about, and Chris. Yeah. yeah, no, he's like six eight and I'm like six yeah. four. So like we both worked the only person, together. <laughs> yeah. The only person right? who's who is who you're shorter than, yeah. <laughs> right. We both worked at Duke and uh Duke University, and he was on the, the Duke IT side and I was working on the research side, and oh, we nice. were both doing kind of similar things at the same time, so we're you know feeding off each other. So the idea now is that like, he's been an SRE for a while. He's all these different ways of doing dedicated now. And let's bring that to the channel. So yeah, it'd be cool to get 
a bunch of SREs from throughout that org. Uh, yeah, it, it would be for it would sure. Be nice, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, cool, awesome, man. Well, thank right. you for showing us all this. Fun yeah, stuff. I, I know this was a crash course because um, I went from like hello world to full pipeline, but <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to, you know, go over the, um, you know, how it fits in with GetOps and how Argo CD fits in, um, mm-hmm. and how really your Git workflow will dictate, dictate all that. That's the center of everything. Um, so, um, yeah. So unless there's any other questions, I think, uh, I think we're good for this time. Oh, one housekeeping. Totally Ooh, forgot. Yes. We are skipping. Um, uh, we're, we're taking a break for the next show. So we're, we're skipping instead of the next show being in two weeks, it'll be in four weeks. It'll be a month out uh, because of uh, KubeCon, right? So, right. Um, so, so you're KubeCon talking EU to KubeCon. is going on. So I have, yeah, I have a, I have a, a thing. I, I tweeted it out on KubeCon, right? I actually, you guys kind of, kind of got a sneak preview because I kind of go over this demo in mm-hmm. that, in that talk. Um, and two, uh, we're having GitOpsCon, right? So if you haven't signed up for GitOpsCon, yes, uh, CF, CFPs thing. were submitted. We, we emailed out the congratulations. It's happening. So I'll be at GitOpsCon. I'll be at KubeCon. So we're mm-hmm. taking a break that week because there's going to be, um, yeah, a lot of stuff going I mean, on. the pattern is full. So yeah, uh, GitOpsCon is on Monday the 5th. Uh, OpenShift Commons Before. Gathering is on the 6th. And, or yeah, something like, no, 3rd, 4th. So yeah. GitOpsCon is Be- the th- busy. Yeah. Uh, Commons is 4th. Oh, Commons is the 4th. The conference Keep kicks going. off on the 5th. And I'm doing a talk that morning uh, on the 5th. Yeah. So yeah, by the, by Wednesday, I will probably be exhausted. And yeah, be so we're taking a break. Three we're taking more days one, yeah. of KubeCon going still. So yeah, um, yeah. So um, but please yeah, come so check we... out Chris or yeah, Christian's talk, my talk, yeah. everybody's talks. You need to kind of reach the scene here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So go go check us out there. And um, next week is Red Hat Summit. So if you haven't signed up yet. Go there, Red get your free summit? ticket. I just dropped the link in chat. It's free. If, you know, let's say you can't make the first half, but you want to be alerted about the second half, please sign up anyway, because go. that's how you get in the notification chain. There you go. So uh, lots of stuff going on in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I figured we'll take a break on streaming. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, We'll, 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 we'll still be out there. We'll still be streaming. Yeah, we'll definitely not, be around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just not, 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 not on OpenShift TV. Um, yeah, there'll be, so yeah, there cool. will be, uh, during KubeCon, there will be office hours that we're doing. Um, so I need to get those all booked out and put in the schedule, but I think I'm doing that tomorrow. Well, maybe not tomorrow, given looking at the calendar now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Talking about spillover for meetings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, today was, everything spills over into tomorrow. But anyways uh thank you christian thank you audience uh this this is it for the channel today we appreciate you tuning in throughout the day and uh stay safe out there everybody for sure yeah yeah see you guys later